गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स टुडे वी विल सी द डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द ब्रेन एंड द वेरियस फीचर्स हियर एज यू कैन सी दिस इज द कंप्लीट सेरेब्रल हेमिसफियर विथ स्पाइनल कॉर्ड एंड द ब्रेन स्टेम हियर नाउ एज यू कैन सी दिस इज होल सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम इज फॉर्म बाय द सेरेब्रम सेरेबेलम you can see this brain stem from the midbrain pons and medulla oblongata which continues as the spinal cord the spinal cord is this one as you can see it is up to this point so this is the spinal cord so whole length is around 45 cm so these are the different parts of the central nervous system seen in this specimen now as a whole brain we can see in this specimen you can see that these are the two cerebral hemispheres which are separated in the midline by the median fissure and here inside you can see they are connected with each other by the band of fibers known as the corpus callosum it is a commissural fibers so these are the two cerebral hemispheres and they are separated by a fissure which is occupied by fox cerebri here this surface which you can see is the superolateral surface and this one which is medial surface complete surface we can see by making a section and here when you see upside down this is the base of the brain this is inferior surface of the cerebrum the orbital part and the temporal part but base of the brain is comprised of not only the inferior surface of cerebrum but you can see the uh, hypothalamus also like this mammillary bodies and you can see this cerebral peduncles of the mid brain you can see the pons and you can see this medulla oblongata also so this whole thing along with the cerebellum seen on each side is the base of the brain now we will try to see individual features of the uh, two cerebral hemispheres so this is the superolateral surface of the cerebral hemisphere this is the superomedial border this is the inferolateral border this is the inferomedial border so between superomedial border and inferolateral border we have superolateral surface and here on this the superomedial border and the inferomedial border we have the medial surface and between inferolateral and inferomedial border this is the inferior surface as you can see this is the superolateral surface between superomedial border and the inferolateral border so this is a rounded superolateral surface here you can see when we have cut it in two halves so that the corpus callosum is seen it is in the medial surface so this is a medial surface between superomedial border and inferomedial border so this whole thing is in uh, medial surface this is inferior surface as you can see between inferolateral border and inferomedial border this is inferior surface inferior surface is two parts the orbital part which is in front and temporal part which is behind now coming to the superolateral surface as you can see the cerebrum has various sulci and gyri the sulci are the depressions as you can see and the gyri are the elevation between the depressions or the sulci so this is the gyri and this is the sulci the most important sulci seen in this specimen is here as you can see i am moving a forceps into it is a central sulcus this is a central sulcus is a demarcating sulcus between frontal lobe and the parietal lobe so in front it's a frontal lobe behind it's a parietal lobe so this is the central sulcus it runs obliquely from superomedial border and it is not interrupted in between another important sulcus which is of interest to us is the lateral sulcus the lateral sulcus has a stem here it has a anterior ramus it has a ascending ramus and a longest a posterior ramus so these are the three rami of the lateral sulcus the posterior ramus is important that it demarcates the parietal lobe here and the temporal lobe here below this lateral sulcus you find the temporal lobe the other important feature for demarcation of lobes of the cerebrum is the preoccipital notch here and the parieto occipital sulcus here parieto occipital sulcus is seen some small part in superior surface if we join an imaginary line from parieto occipital sulcus to preoccipital notch this imaginary line will separate out the occipital lobe of the cerebrum 
so here on this surface with the help of the sulci and imaginary lines we separate different lobes of the cerebrum so in front of the central sulcus we have frontal lobe behind the central sulcus we have parietal lobe below the lateral sulcus we have temporal lobe and behind this imaginary line between parieto occipital notch uh, and the parieto occipital sulcus and the preoccipital notch is occipital lobe the important sulcus is central and lateral sulcus here apart from it here the uh, frontal sul sulci and the frontal gyri are also seen now here the important areas also of our interest and the various gyri in the areas so in front of the central sulcus we have here a precentral gyrus which contains the motor area of cerebrum and behind the central sulcus we have post central gyrus which contains the sensory area of the cerebrum apart from it here a pars triangularis between an anterior and ascending ramus this is the broca's motor area of speech in the temporal lobe we have here the auditory area and auditory association area here in the occipital lobe mostly on the medial surface we find the visual area and visual association areas so these are the important areas which are seen in superotor surface in the temporal lobe also superior middle and inferior the temporal gyri are seen here in the parietal lobe the superior parietal lobule and inferior parietal lobule is also seen here a lunate sulcus is also seen so these are few sulci and important gyri along with the areas in superior surface if you see the medial surface now as you can see in the medial surface the most important feature is the fibers which are cut this is the corpus callosum it's a commissural fibers in the corpus callosum there are different parts this is a rostrum which is tapering this is the band which is known as genu between genu and the splenium the posterior part we have here a body and the posterior most part is known as splenium so corpus callosum has four different parts rostrum genu body and the splenium so this is the most important fiber system connecting two cerebral hemispheres above this corpus callosum we can see this particular cingulate gyrus above it there is a cingulate sulcus on the posterior part of this we find a y shaped sulcus and the upper limb is the parieto occipital sulcus and lower limb is the calcarine sulcus parieto occipital sulcus demarcates the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe between parieto occipital sulcus and calcarine sulcus we have a triangular region known as cuneus in front of the parieto occipital sulcus this region is known as precuneus so these are the important features seen of the medial surface of cerebrum other structures which are not part of the cerebrum but deeply placed nuclei and the cavities also seen in this specimen is this is the lateral ventricle in the lateral ventricle we see this elevation is a caudate nucleus the head of caudate nucleus and this one is the thalamus so caudate nucleus thalamus and the cavity is lateral ventricle so these are the parts which are seen on the medial surface if we see the inferior surface we have the orbital part and tentorial part orbital part is related to orbit and tentorial part is related to tentorium cerebelli so these are the parts of the cerebral hemisphere seen in this specimen